everybody, it's Amy from The Hag Reads, and I am here today to talk about a bunch of books, but they're all children's books. Um, these are all the children's books I read in the month of August, at least in the second half. Um, I just kind of grouped them all together and saved them towards the um, end of um, that run of things. I am, uh, the books that I've been reviewing are more recent, but I just kind of let these pile up. So I could kind of do one brief video on all of the children's books. So I have uh, two Nancy Drew books, three Hardy Boys books, eight a Goosebumps books, and one Lemony Snicket book. Um, so um, we it's the 15th of September. It's officially the middle of the month. I cannot even believe we basically have, you know, four months or three and a half months left in 2017 um where the heck did the time go um uh, maybe given reading books and being sick and but gosh i don't feel like it's that far along in the year but i am ever so grateful um that it is uh the middle of september um we're seeing a slight decrease in temperature i talked about it before we're right around the 100 degree mark a little bit more um Typically by now we're starting to see some high 90s, but we haven't really, it's been predicted a couple of times, but the temperature still got up into the low 100s. Um, I'm hoping this doesn't go on for the whole rest of the month and into October. Um, I'm ready for a slightly bigger break in the weather than we've had just yet. And I think I would be more okay with the temperature in the hundreds still if we had been getting any significant monsoon weather, which we aren't. Um, it got really windy last night. It knocked some of the um, dead palm fronds off the palm tree out there because they never tripped the tree. Uh, a very windy, a little dusty because, you know, desert. Um, and it's it sprinkled a tiny little bit, maybe five times. Not enough to really even wet the sidewalk for longer than it took to hit the ground and evaporate. Um, and that's the kind of rain we've been having. It's really very disappointing. I do actually enjoy the energy of the monsoons, but we are, we've had so few this year and in the last few years, really very, very few of them. So I'd like to see a few more if it's going to stay this hot, but I don't think it's in the cards. Um, so now that I've talked for three minutes about the weather, let's dive into the books. For Nancy Drew, I read uh, The Clue in the Jewel Box. And um, that was about a rich, older, you know, implied royalty um, who has this special jewel box with a, a secret attached to it. And, you know, because Nancy Drew is so perfect and kind and helpful, um, she helps this older lady uh, basically protect her fortune from... Uh, the long lost grandson she's been looking for who may or not, may not in fact be the grandson but is certainly uh, not adverse to uh, bilking the old woman out of what money she has left and really just generally making a jackass of himself um, the second one was the secret in the old attic and that is Nancy Drew number 21 um, secret in the old attic I'm trying to think oh this one was about um an older man and his granddaughter and they are you know he's on a retirement income and doesn't know how he's going to take care of his granddaughter but his son had written a bunch of songs um original music scores with lyrics that suddenly the old man is hearing on the radio um under somebody else's name and so he enlists Nancy Drew to kind of help him solve that and to look for the rest of the songs because perhaps the selling of and royalties from um, these songs that his son wrote uh, would help support him and his granddaughter. Um, for Hardy Boys, that was three books. Uh, Footprints Under the Window, number 12, which was kind of like a spy um, thriller Hardy Boys edition. Uh, the Mark on the Door, which, is, uh, which was like... Mm, it, it most of the story occurred in Mexico and it was kind of like corrupt Mexican government or not government but corrupt Mexican 
uh, this one wasn't a drug cartel. It was about, I, well, I can't say because they don't really reveal it until the end. It was a cartel of a different kind. Um, and then the third one was the Hidden Harbor Mystery. And those are 12, 13, and 14. So I'm slowly catching up to Nancy Drew on this. Um, the Hidden Harbor Mystery was two brothers living on a, uh, an estate. And they had a house on either side of this large pond. And there was a land dispute because uh, each side of the pond had an oak. And when the grandfather, uh, or when the, whoever made the will, said that the land, you know, one brother would own it up to the oak tree and the other brother would own from the oak tree to the other side and so um there's a big argument about which oak tree they're talking about because there's one on each side of the pond and both of, both of them are trying to claim the pond based on where the other oak tree is um and then there's a um, missing family documents and supposedly a fortune um hidden somewhere on the property and so there's this whole mystery around that and then you have you know another and one brother is an archaeologist and secretive and kind of flighty and the other brother is a businessman and he's kind of gruff and very suspicious and he appears to be doing something shady um but it's not made clear until the end whether or not he is um and then you have a third party who's trying to buy the rights to the lake and the surrounding area from both the brothers um, but presenting it in such a way that it looks like he's working for the other brother no matter which one he's talking to and he's really not getting anywhere with that but he's also threatening the Hardy Boys and uh, just generally making trouble so you know of course they always solve the mystery and everything resolves night you know tied up with a nice neat bow and everybody lives happily ever after I don't think I'm spoiling anything. You know, if you've read one, you know there's a formula to it. With the Goosebumps. Uh, so I actually have these because I own these ones. The other ones I had to return to the library. Um, I did want to make a quick note. I'm in the 20s with Nancy Drew in terms of how many books I've read or how far along I am in the series. And um, they're starting to only be available digitally through my library. And I've already encountered a place in um i think it's the hidden harbor mystery is the one i had to buy um because it was not available as a physical book nor as an ebook from my library um so i suspect this is going to be like what happened with the goosebumps books where i got to a certain point and they just weren't available from the library anymore so i think i'm going to have to start buying the hardy boys and nancy drew books I'll break my heart because I do want to own them for my personal library. It's just I don't have the money to invest right now in, uh, you know, the original series I think was around 60 so or so books for each one. But then there was, you know, a, a kind of revamp, I think, in the 70s-ish uh, where they edited down the original books and took out a bunch of the questionably racist and, uh, you know, just... Uh, the things that dated it to uh, old white people, racist standards. Um, but they then commissioned somebody else to write more books. So in each book, the actual number of books that comprise the core, not any spin-off series that comprise the core uh, canon, I guess, of the series is around, it's, it's just shy of 200 books for both of them. Um, so I don't have the money to go out and just buy huge quantities of these. And I rarely see them. Even when my library has them, they're still $2 a pop, which is a pretty good deal. But still, if they have, you know, five or ten of them, which they very rarely do. I've, I think at one time I saw four. And I didn't have any money that week, so I was really bummed. And they were gone the following week. Um, but I would love to own both the Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, all of those slightly less than 200. Um, in the little hardcover ones, I don't want... I don't want this because I'll tell you what's going to happen to these after. These are not in good shape. Um, the covers are falling apart. In some of them, the pages are falling out. Some of them are in better shape than others. But I'm going to break your book-loving hearts. I am going to pull these apart once I've read them all and use them for mixed media. Gasp, 
you can pass out. Now, I'm going to destroy these books. Um, but that is largely because they're not in very good shape to begin with. And if you put these in the hands of the age range that they are meant for, they would deteriorate very quickly, um, more so than they already are. Um, I will never own the Goosebump series because now that I've sat down and, you know, I was going to read all 21 in that one weekend and I could not bring myself to do it. I had forgotten. I do enjoy them. They're fun and charming and there's a nostalgia to them because I read these with my children when they were the appropriate age for these books. Um, but reading them all in a row, kind of binging them, not so much fun. So now I'm trying to sandwich them in between other books um, because, one, they are extremely low. There's a formula to it, and it's almost exactly. There are between, there's usually two kids, sometimes three. They are often two best friends, and one's a boy and one's a girl, uh, a brother and a sister, or two brothers. And invariably, one of those two people, however the configuration works, and if there's three, definitely one of them is a little jackass <laughs> um, is playing really mean pranks, just does mean, stupid things, and everybody puts up with it. Like, if this shit happened in real life, uh, you would backhand a bitch. But that's the formula for the book. And I think that maybe that's sometimes how children see their siblings for their friends. Um, because they, you know, empathy still being developed and all of that. You know, the, it's a developmental thing to still be kind of selfish in how you think about the world and it all being about you and that kids sometimes think things are funny that really aren't. <laughs> um, but in reading too many at once, I was getting kind of frustrated and, and I was like, <sighs> so I want to enjoy them because there is a fun nostalgia. They are kind of, you know, cute and I don't know, cute. Um, they just have this quality to them. Um, that is charming, I guess, uh, in their own way. I have always referred to them as Stephen King light. This is developing a taste for future readers in the horror genre. Um, so I support it in that way, but I don't want to own these for my permanent library. One, because right now it's popular to collect R.L. Stein, and um, I don't want to pay the prices per book that they are available, and I never ever see these at the Goodwill, which although I have not been in a long time, I never see them at uh, the library. I have, I think I found two one time over a year ago at the library. Um, so, and if you buy them on uh, like eBay, even if you buy a lot, which I don't mean a lot of books, but I mean a group of books considered a lot. Um, you're still talking about a pretty significant expense. Right now, because a lot of these are out of print, the price is being driven up because the children that grew up with these books and have the true nostalgia for them are my transgender son's age, which is 19, to about 10 years older than that. And they are collecting the, the memorabilia and the books for their own nostalgic reasons. Um, I've seen a number of videos on here of people who are collecting them um, specifically because they were their favorite books when they were kids and um, so that group of people who are involved in that are driving up the prices and I don't want to pay that much I really wouldn't want to pay more than a quarter for these to be perfectly honest with you um, because of the condition of most of them and because I know what's gonna happen if I bring them into my house as part of a library People that I know with children are going to, you know, the children may want to sit down and read them while they're here, and that's perfectly fine, but they will fall apart, and then I would have to replace. And I would never deny a child a, a chance to read a book. So um, just from that perspective, because I can't get them in a format economically, like all digital, where then I could just hand a, a tablet to a kid and they could read the book. Um this format is designed to fall apart. These are published by Scholastic. Um, the bindings are pretty cheap. The glue is not very good. The covers are easily bent. You know, um, the pages are a little thicker than you might find, but um, they just don't have that staying power. Whereas I would love to own the Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. Those have been classics for a long time. I enjoy them, and I'm sure, you know, on a dark and stormy night, I might pick one up at random and just read it for the fun of it. 
Um, and also because if you make books available in your home, the children that come visit you or that are your grandchildren or your nieces and nephews, that sort of thing, um, will often pick up a book to read it and then maybe they'll go home with it and you'll have to replace it. But that's fine because if they go home with it and they want to read more, then you're instilling something in a child that isn't very worthwhile. So the Goosebumps books that I read are The Haunted Mask 2. Sorry, look at that. Look at it! Which is number 36. Um, and that is, you know, the mask. There was a Haunted Mask 1. Um, would I be spoiling this at this point if I told what happened? The mask tries to take the kid over. It's creepy. But the first one was much better. I didn't think this one, you know, held the impact that the other one did. Um, I was more annoyed with the kid than anything else. This is The Beast from the East. And I'm not sure what I thought it was going to be, but it's kind of about a game of uh, hide-and-go-seek that goes horribly awry. Um, and that one is number 43. Um, Egg Monsters from Mars, which is number 42. And I kind of like this one. It was kind of gross and a little creepy, but the ending was so unrealistic, like... I won't say what happened at the end, but if you read this, um, when the kid's walking across the lawn at the end to go to his friend's house, he was wearing pants. How would that even be possible? Um, the next one is Bad Hair Day, which is number 41. Uh, Evil Bunny attempts to take over the magical world. Um, the Headless Ghost, which is number 37. This one was, uh, I imagine if I was like eight or nine years old, this one would probably actually be pretty creepy. I, I, I liked this one. And then uh, bar The Barking Ghost, which is number 32. And I like the idea of this book, but the ending really left me cold. And then The Legend of the Lost Legend, number 47. And I didn't really like this one. I didn't like either of the two characters in it, and I just thought the premise was kind of lame. Um, I like the name, though. <laughs> and so those are the Goosebumps books that I have finished since the, since the video I posted where I said I was going to read all 21 of them. I read eight of them. <laughs> um, I, got, I, I read three in a row, and I was like, I really can't do this all in a row. So I've decided to just sandwich them in between other books. Um, I think that's going to be a better way to go in terms of enjoyment for me. Um, and then once they're all done, I'm going to dismantle them. Wah, ha, 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 evil book owner. But they will be repurposed, reused. Um, they'll wind up in art and maybe as some blackout poetry for some uh, youngsters and that sort of thing. And then the final book for this roundup um, is The Slippery Slope, which is a series of unfortunate events, number 10. And it's still not going real well for those uh, Baudelaire kids. Um, I did like this book, though. I thought they worked well as a team. And they uncovered something about the family, the Quigley family. Is that what it is? The other family of the triplets that are now only two. Um, they discovered something interesting about that. And there was a lot of problem solving. And I liked the little puzzle with the condiments from the fridge. It was just pretty charming. Um... My son won't tell me how the series ends, and normally I don't want spoilers, but I'm like, do they finally get a happy ending? And he won't tell me. And you shouldn't either if you know, because as much as I want to know, I don't want to know because then I maybe won't finish the series. I have the next two books digitally available. I have checked them out. I have 11 days left on my rental out of 14, and I'm going to read those. Today is... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try to read uh, those two books over the next three days. And then I also have the last book, a physical copy. Um, I have a library haul I need to do, um, and I'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day. But so I do have the last book, so I'm going to binge through those. My son still hasn't read Slippery Slope, and I had to return it because it sat in his room um, until it was time to go back, like I couldn't renew it anymore. And I didn't make it to six renewals. No, nope, that didn't happen. Um, but somebody else requested it, and so we had to send it back. I have re-requested it for him because he insists he does want to finish the series. Um, but I have been reading this for the whole year now, 
and I just want to finish it. Um, I have so many series that I'm reading, both children's and adult, and I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I also want to know how it ends. Like, I have that curiosity. I care enough about the storyline at this point that I really want to know how this ends. But I also want, it's another one I can knock off my list. I am very close. This, if I read eight, oh God, going to make me do math. I'm sorry. I can't do math. 13 books left in the Lemony Snicket series. And then I have still the Chronicles of Narnia to go through because I'm going to do that after I finish the Goosebumps. And I think I just said Lemony Snicket instead of Goosebumps. I'm a moron. Um, no, I have 13 books left in the Goosebumps series. The only other series by R.L. Stein that I have really liked, and I've only read two in it, I think I read The Slumber Party and, um, I don't know if that's the first book, but I read the first book and sec is the second book that I've read in that, in that grouping. And then number 43, I love those little Fear Street books, the idea of them, that's like so junior high. And I would not have been in junior high when they came out. But I read kind of similar books when I was in junior high. But there wasn't like a series of them. You would just have to go to the bookstore and kind of browse through the books. And, and you know, gag past the Sweet Valley High books and find that sort of book. I used to love to read that when I was in junior high and a little bit beyond that. Um, I've always been a horror fan. And so I read that type of book a lot in junior high and, and maybe the first year or so of high school. And so I have a real nostalgic love for those. I would love to own the whole Fear Street series. And I would read it and probably what I would do is the same thing that I'm doing with these Goosebumps series because they'll come beat up and whatnot. And I would probably just um, use them in mixed media because I do a lot of mixed media. And I do trading with pages and stuff. So um, it's kind of fun to do that if you have a really wide variety of things. I think um, my traders have most often expressed that I, I send them things they don't get from anywhere else. And I think that there's like a, a little bit of laughter involved when you get, you know, five pages from different <laughs> Goosebumps books as opposed to just five encyclopedia pages. Like you get, I you would still get encyclopedia pages from me or dictionary pages, but you would also get something like that. So um, that has been fun to do. And that is all I have for this uh, all children's books all the time update. I will be back tomorrow with another vlog. If you have watched the end, thank you so much. Happy whatever time of day it is when you are watching this. And I will see you next time. Bye!